Um, question uh, for the panel from Morris. Why has nothing been done to increase the Minnesota a monthly family program payment? The caller notes that it has been stagnant since 1986. Would that be the correct or? Yeah, it, See, go, it I goes way right back. Away, yeah, no, it goes, it, yeah. yeah, it goes way back. Um, I, that's, that's probably correct into the 1980s. I was off the top of my head going to say in the early 90s, but okay. the caller is probably correct. Um, I think it needs to be adjusted. I don't know what that dollar amount is. It's 100 million. It's 100 million dollars to fix. I yeah. mean, the the the, the, lay, the stuff uh, we saw in health and human services is about 100 million dollars to to raise it. Yeah, I think it was 100 dollars a month or something. It's I mean, I might have my the actual you know, monthly to, amount per individual. I I don't have in my hand, but you know, it's made to be. I think um, at the all right, we're going to get you by for a while. Well, it's you certainly know. something that that should be looked at, but. To answer the question why, I mean, we put the last uh, budget uh, about over $11 billion into Health and Human Services, and it is the fastest growing part of our budget, and there are so many demands. Uh, yes, there are demands in, in this area, but then we hear from all kinds of folks that, that have needs as well. So uh, it is a big part of our budget. It's a fast moving part of our budget in terms of going up. And there are a lot of demands. Silver Tsunami is with us. You know, I, I, I said that on the floor the other day, and Senator Dames is going to remind me of that uh, as we looked at granny pods, and, and that's the, the piece. But, but you're, you're right on it. Uh, it is the fastest growing just because of those needs, and that's our, the, we're the general fund. So going back to the conversation on transportation, as you start dicking into, you know, the, dipping into that general fund piece, all of a sudden you start to compete against everything else that's in there. And that's a... That's going to be some long, long night discussions on that. So, as I uh, recall, yeah. if we just stay at the same level right right now, with the increased number of people coming on to MA on the senior side, yep. we're pushing real close to an additional billion dollars per year. And Senator, you know, for the first That's time in the history, a problem. You're right on that. And the first time in the history of Minnesota, and our educators would know this as well, is we have more people retiring in the state of Minnesota than we do kids in the K-12 system. That's 850,000 kids in the K-12 yes. system. And it's the first time in the history, when, so something needs to be really When we say that it's it the fastest yeah. growing yeah. part yeah. of uh, state government, um, I think it's maybe number two to corrections, but I'm not sure of that. Uh, but the point is it's the demographic changes, as is being pointed out here. Yeah. Uh, the baby boomers are now retiring as they begin to age. Uh, one of the fastest uh, growing parts of the human services budget when you look at it internally is long-term care mm -hmm. and uh, that's one area I think we have to look at uh, to provide uh, better services uh, for uh, home care so people uh, can uh, have the appropriate support they need to remain in their own home and uh, not simply because it's uh, lower cost because I haven't talked to really any senior citizen that with, would say that uh, if they had health care needs their preference would be to stay in their home and I think uh, there's really a, a benefit both ways then. You can uh, meet that uh, concern and give people the opportunity to remain in their own home, but also uh, there's some potential savings there uh, as well. And, and then with that, you have, a, you have an issue too. When you get elderly, uh, elderly waivered services programs, you still have a spend down provision that says you have to spend down to 75 and in some cases 80% of poverty in order to maintain your insurance. Uh, premiums and, and no other subcategory has to do that. They can still be at 133 percent. So those, all those issues are in health and human services and, and need to be really flushed out because, like you're saying, it, it is growing and it's yeah. growing because of the demographic yeah. change. And it's and the second biggest part of our budget. Education absolutely. absolutely. Yep. And if and you keep these people in their homes, their mental health state is much better too. So I mean, in the long run, if we can keep these people in their homes, it's it's. Uh, helps them a lot and helps us a lot. Yep. Well, my wife would say, Senator, that getting me out of the house keeps her sane. <laughs> but that's a personal That's note. why Linda's wife wants him to keep in the house. <laughs> <laughs> we need a yeah. rim shot here. You got a drum set. Yeah, right. I mean, we need a rim <laughs> shot. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, you know, I was just going to comment. Uh, my mother, who's now passed away, but I still remember the conversation we had with her. Uh, we had her uh, in-home hospice. And she was fortunate. Uh, she had five children. All of us lived in the Twin Cities. 
and uh, her children and uh, our spouses and a couple of nieces uh, were able to help keep grandma, as we called her, uh, in her own home. Mm -hmm. And uh, she told us clearly that was her desire. She uh, said flat out one time when I was talking to her when she was quite ill, she said, uh, Lyndon, she said, uh, I know I'm going to pass away, but she said, I would just like to curl up in my own bed. And uh, we were fortunate because we were, the whole family was here in the Twin Cities that we could do that. But when I say the desire of a, human ser of a uh, senior citizen is to remain in their own home, not when they're facing as her situation was right. uh, facing imminent yep. uh, death, but uh, mm -hmm. to uh, be able to, to live in their own home and the comfort of their own home. Is so really many of these strong issues desire. tie one to another. For example, mm -hmm. that yeah. issue of somebody living in their home in the rural area, 7, 10, 12 miles out of town, they do need to get to the drugstore. And if they don't have family, is there a rural transit system that gets them into the drugstore? Now we're back to transportation. So you see it every day, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. balancing and how these issues cross over. Yep.